Morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us for our time of prayer, worship, and the Word. Let's open up in prayer. Psalm 13, verse 5. I've thrown myself headlong into your arms. I am celebrating your rescue. I'm singing at the top of my lungs. I'm so full of answered prayers. Lord, we thank you, Lord God, for you are a God who answers prayers. You hear us, you see us, and you're always involved. And you always bring answers to all our prayers. So we come to you again today in worship and in trust that our lives are in your hands as we continue to serve, as we continue to walk in our world today. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us worship God right now. Low, no river wide enough to stop you. How great is your love for me? The darkest night, the deepest sea, no power on earth could ever stop you. How great is your love for me? And I'm falling in your waves of it's too wonderful for me In your presence, God, my fears undone I surrender all of me And I'm falling in 
Lord, we thank you, Lord God, for your presence today. We ask that you would continue to minister to us, speak to our hearts, open the eyes of our hearts, that we might see the truth of your word, that we might understand your will, and that we might have the grace to obey you and walk with you. In Jesus' name, amen. We're looking at Psalm 13 today. Let me read this short psalm. How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I take counsel in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all the day? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Consider and answer me, O Lord my God. Light up my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Lest my enemies say I have prevailed over him lest my foes rejoice because I am shaken. But I have trusted in your steadfast love. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. We were in a dear friend's birthday celebration the other day. They were celebrating in Clark. So another friend and I drove there to join them for, di for the dinner celebration. On our way back, around 9 p.m., we checked ways uh, for the best way to go home. And we, but we did not like the route Ways was telling us to take. Um, Ways was telling us to go through Angeles City when uh, the entrance to the expressway was just around the corner. So we did take what the, way, uh, the advice of Ways and we just entered the expressway only to be caught in traffic between the connection of the SETEX to the NLEX. I, I'm, I, I'm, no wonder, I realize, no wonder Waze was telling us to take another way. I, I didn't like that way. So now I'm wondering, uh, while, while, while going through that, I was wondering, how many times we probably ignored the best option because we don't think it was good. How many times I probably have missed God's best in certain areas of my life because I didn't want or I didn't like the advice or what the Word of God was telling me to do. Here in Psalm 13, we see the psalmist most likely who is King David asking God the same, in a sense, the same question four times. And he says, God, how long? He says, how long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? Can you picture this? This is the man whom God had called, confirmed by the prophets, seen and believed by many. Now, he's the one asking, he's, he's the one asking God, will you, how long will you forget me? Think about this. This is the most powerful man in his nation asking this question. This is the man who has access to power, wealth, and wisdom. This is the man who has the best protection, the best service, and the wisest advice readily available. He's praying, he's crying, he's pleading with no answer. How long? I don't know. One week, one month, one year, one decade. All I know, it's, it's probably too long. Why? Because the king is pleading, he's asking, how long? Then another question, how long will you hide your face from me? In a sense, he's asking, where are you, God? He feels so alone. I don't see you, I don't feel you. Have you left me? Why? Why me? Why now? Why despite of my service, my commitment, my worship? So many whys. Then he asks again, how long must I take counsel in my soul 
and have sorrow in my heart all day. King David has been talking to himself, counseling himself, consoling himself. I wonder how many times do you have to talk to ourselves? Have you been in a place like that? Where you have to convince yourself, where you have to talk yourself into persevering, into believing that there's hope into trusting God is good even in the midst of the pain. Talking to ourselves, talking ourselves into faith and trust even when we've already given our best. Then another how long question, how long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Remember, this is a, this is a question of a very successful king who leads a military force that's probably one of the most powerful in his time. A military force that has seen one miracle after the other, time and time again. How long will the impossible dominate and rule over me and my circumstances? How long will sickness and disease occupy my mind and heart? How long will lack dictate my life? Then we see this, the amazing choice King David makes despite the many questions of how long. Psalm 13 verse 5, But I have trusted in your steadfast love. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. Message Bible puts it this way, I have thrown myself headlong into your arms. I'm celebrating your rescue. I'm singing at the top of my lungs. I am so full of answered prayers. David is saying, I choose to turn to God. I choose to go to God. I choose to trust God despite the abundant resources available to me. As we close, I want to look at three amazing, life-changing, miracle-working church choices David made in the hope that it encourages us to make the same choice. The first one is, I choose you to trust you. But I have trusted in your steadfast love, the Bible says. The Message Bible says, I have thrown myself headlong into your arms. David's Question, uh, questions God, yet chooses to trust God. He chooses to trust the never-changing, unrelenting love of God. God's love does not change because of our behavior, our circumstances, and even because our feelings change. God's love is steadfast, immovable, indestructible, and unchanging. David, in a real sense, is saying, my circumstances, my difficulties, my enemies will not and cannot change the love of God. Friends, God's love is with you today. Secondly, J David, in a sense, says, I choose to rejoice, to celebrate. Scripture says, my heart shall rejoice in your salvation. Message puts it this way, I'm celebrating your rescue. David's choosing to keep trusting the love of God did not immediately change his circumstance. But he makes another, uh, but he makes the choice. He chooses to rejoice in God's salvation. He chooses to rejoice in God's rescue. In a sense, he's saying it's coming and I'm waiting. I wonder sometimes or how many times I might have missed God's rescue because I no longer wanted to wait and took matters into my own hands. I wonder how many times we've experienced that in our own lives ourselves. Sometimes I wonder how close I was, how close we could have been to the breakthrough God is doing and wants to do in our lives, yet we took matters into our own, own hands instead of waiting. I'm not saying that when you trust God, you don't do anything. But when we trust God, we go to Him, seek His will, 
and wait for His leading and wait for His timing. The third choice David, I believe, made was I choose to look at your goodness. I choose to look at the goodness of God. David says, I will sing to the Lord because He has dealt bountifully with me. I'm singing at the top of my lungs. I'm so full of answered prayers. This is a very crucial choice that many times we do not consider. We can many times get overwhelmed by our problems that that's all we see. We're blinded from the things God is already doing and that God wants to do in our lives. I remember years ago, I was going through a difficult time. I was getting tired and discouraged. I was questioning. I was wondering. I was wondering why things were going this way and not the way I wanted. I, I could not really understand what I was feeling. I was serving God, obeying Him, and yet I was facing dead ends again and again. Then at one point, when I was pro praying and pouring out my heart to God, I was reminded of the many things God had already done in our lives, even in the past few weeks, months. And when I look back into my life, the amazing miracles God has allowed us to see, immediately I thanked God and began worshiping Him. I began praying again, but this time with renewed hope and faith. Friends, God's goodness is all around us. It is always around us. Our lives today is the fruit of God's goodness, His graciousness, and His compassion towards us. Let me encourage us to choose to look at the goodness of God so that we may have the faith to persevere through the challenges today and even tomorrow. I want to read the last part of that psalm again before we pray. David says, But I have trusted in your steadfast love. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. Lord Jesus, we thank you, Lord God. Lord, that despite the challenges we face, your goodness, your graciousness, and your compassion always follows us. We pray and we ask that you would open the eyes of our heart, that as we go through life every day, Lord, by some miracle, we will always see your hand everywhere we go, despite and in spite of the challenges we face, we will trust you. Our confidence will be in you that you never leave us nor forsake us. Let us now worship God again. We sing with the heavens Oh, oh, oh how great is your love sing with the heavens oh how great is your love how wide how deep we sing with the heavens oh how great is your love nothing like your love we sing with the
waves of love. It's too wonderful for me. In your presence, God, my fears are done. I surrender all of me. Lord, thank you that you are always with us every day of our lives. Now, let me bless you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. God bless you all.